How's it going everyone, Lead Cypher here. In this video we'll be continuing the Volnet series. We attempt the Volnet node room. It's an easy room based on Node.js and has a total of two flags. Now let's start by deploying the machine. Before you start with the MF scan, make sure to ping the machine to see if it's up or not. After you get a response back, proceed with MF scan. As usual, my flags here are dash SS for TCP sense scan, dash A for aggressive scan, dash ON for normal output, and store the scan results in a file called mmapscan.log, and finally the IP address of the machine. You might find no ports open, that's because the services on the box haven't fully started yet. Just give it a couple of minutes and run the scan again. After the scan is complete, you will find only one port open, which is 8080, and it's running Express.js, which is a framework based on Node.js. After that, if you were to proceed with directory fuzzing, you won't find anything that really stands out. But if you intercepted any get request with verb speed and looked at the cookies, you will find that base64 encoded string. When you decode that string, you will get back JSON data. Now if you stumble across Node.js applications in previous machines, either on Hack the Box or Try Hack Me, the very first thing that will come to your mind is Node Serialize. We can use a serialized Node object to get server-side code execution. Google search Node Serialize Payload. And the very first result contains the payload we want. Copy the payload and remove all the backslashes to prevent any syntax error. First, I will try to have the machine ping my attack box to make sure we have code execution. The dash C flag here for 3 pings only. You have to specify a small number of pings, otherwise it will keep pinging you forever and you will need to revert the machine to get back code execution. After you're done writing the payload, place it as the value of the username key. Now use TCP dump to listen for incoming ICMP packets. The dash I flag here for interface, which is ton zero, and what packets to listen for. After that, copy the payload and go to the decoder tab in burp suite and paste it and encode it as base64. Copy the base64 encoded string and override the cookie. Also make sure to encode the equal signs here by selecting them and hitting Ctrl plus U and finding send a request. As you can see here, we get back pings from the vulnerable machine. Now it's time for a reverse shell. Modify the payload again and replace the ping command with a reverse shell of your preference. Also make sure to escape the double quotes here. Sit a NICA listener to wait for the reverse shell and do the same exact previous steps. Once the reverse shell returns, upgrade it by spawning a TTY shell with Python 3. Then hit Ctrl plus Z to background the shell, then type STTY raw minus echo, then FG. Notice when you type FG it won't be displayed, but it will still be written. Then enter twice. Running sudo tag L, you will learn that you can run npm or the node package manager with privileges of the serve manage user. Now if you go to GTF opens and search for npm, you will learn that you can abuse npm to become the serve manage user. Navigate to a directory that you can write to, devshm is a great example. Create a directory and give it any name. Then copy this one liner and paste it in a file inside the directory that you have just created. And you must name the file package.json to have npm execute it. Finally, you run npm with sudo and add the dash u flag to run it with privileges of the serve manage user. After you get a shell as the serve manage user, navigate to its home directory and obtain the user flag. Then run sudo tag l and learn that you can use systemctl to stop and start the volunet service. Systemctl is a command with which you can start and stop pretty much all the services on Linux, like for example SSH and FTP. 
Using the locate command you will find the vulner service file in this directory. Now if you take a look inside that file you will find that the unit that is being executed when the vulner service starts is the vulner job service. When you look inside that file you will find out that it executes benfd when the vulner service starts. Now we will replace benfd with a reverse shell and restart the vulner service with systemctl and have it execute our reverse shell. Just before you start the service make sure you have a NICCAT listener to catch the reverse shell. And there we go we have a root shell. Hope you guys like this machine and learned a thing or two from it. Please leave a like and subscribe if you found value in this video. It really helps the channel to grow and stay tuned for the rest of the series. And see you in the next one. Peace.